Welcome to the Neo Jotuan Podcast. My name is Isaac Kamins. This is a bi-weekly podcast where my friend Jess O'Brien and I discuss internal martial arts, qigong, and meditation. This week we continue our discussion on Jin Yun Ding and his Xingyi. We take from his Xingyi boxing manual, uh, translated by John Groshowitz. Um, then we finish up our discussion on the Negong of moving energy along specific lines. And at the end of the episode, we do a little short practice session so you can uh, get a sense of what we're actually talking about. And along the same lines, we'll be releasing some shiny stuff on the Patreon. It's kind of the same sort of thing where it's just a short little practice session that you can follow along with. So check that out if you're interested. And thanks for listening. Hope you enjoy the episode and take care. Welcome back to the Nate Jatran Podcast with Isaac and Jess. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time talking about the lineage of the great master Liu Hung Jie of Beijing. And this episode is about his Xingyi teacher, Jin Yun Ting, who, as we described last time, uh, left a book of Xingyi teachings behind that, have, that are pretty interesting. And there's a lot of good stuff in there. We wanted to move on and look a little bit more at what this book says. So here's one section by Jin Yun Ting about Xingyi Chen's five principles. So he starts with splitting fist. Splitting fist corresponds to metal and cultivates the lungs. If its energy is flowing, the lung qi will be harmonized. All people rely on qi as their foundation. If the qi is harmonized, then the body will naturally be strong. So that's the first paragraph, all about splitting fist. So that's the connection of pitra and splitting fist with the lungs um, and that metal energy. So there's really strong uh, five elements principles embodied by these Xingyi five element moves. You know, if anybody wants to say that Xingyi isn't about Qi, I mean, here it is in black and white. Like, all people rely on Qi as their foundation, and that's how you make the body naturally strong. Um, and so it's interesting, of all the things to focus on, here he is focusing on metal element. So how do you see metal element as part of Splitting Fist? Well, so metal, from the point of view of the physical body, is the spine and the lungs. So it has to do with breathing and sort of your basic structure. So the metal elements sort of purpose in Qigong and martial arts is to to unify everything, to congeal everything, to connect everything to one sort of unified piece. And it also has to do with the... Uh, the metal element is essentially the mental element, right? That that your mind is uh, sort of regulated by the metal element. So you, the ability to get your intent to go somewhere is metal, right? Uh, to, to get it to project. So you can see why that would be useful in martial arts. And that Santi fist, the famous Santi standing practice of Xingyi is part of this metal element of really concentrating, getting your mind really still and embodied and focused. That's when you're doing the physical motions in Xingyi, your, your hands are usually at least partially coming close to the, the meridians that activate that particular organ. So it's, it's a slightly more, uh, I don't know, general thing than you would do if you were doing like a health practice but you know when you do the motion of bung chen you activate the liver channel next he says drilling fist corresponds to water and supplements the kidneys the movement of its chi is like the winding flowing of water there is nowhere that it does not reach if its chi is harmonized then the kidneys will be full the clear chi will ascend and the turbid chi will descend so wow another discussion of these more esoteric and energy principles that go with the Xingyi fist. This one talking about water and how that connects to the kidneys. Then there's the fluidity, the harmony, and then naturally ascending and descending as part of it, which reminds me of that second Negong principle of energy moving in and flowing through channels in the body. Water is a lot of the twisting motions and turning motions in, in Xingyi. And that's going to activate all this the horizontal meridians which is what particularly activates your kidneys for example 
So it sort of ties in, right? When you do those twisting motions in Xing Yi, you're, you're activating the channels. That activates the meridian, uh, you know, that that the, that activates the, the organ or, or, you know, everything along that channel. So you have, like, <clears throat> sort of this... Uh, I mean, it's why Xing Yi, even when it's not practiced particularly as a health thing, it does make you healthy because you're doing these these things even if you're not aware of it, right? Absolutely. So next he talks about smashing fist, which is clearly what we call bung chen. Smashing fist corresponds to wood and calms the liver. It is the extension and contraction of a unified chi. If this fist is fluid, then the liver is calm, and one can increase the spirit, strengthen the tendon and bones, and solidify mental abilities. So smashing is that uh, driving action of uh, Bung Chen, wood fist. And, and like the solidifying mental ability. So wood is the ability to, once you get your mind there, to get it to like go in. And, like, and water is the ability to hold it there, right? So each one of them kind of ties in with that sort of mental awareness. And, uh, you know, when you do that circle with your hand around your liver, obviously that's going to activate that liver channel. And um, so there's, you know, there's <clears throat> a fair amount of parallels there. You know, this wood fist is always associated with the liver. So in one sense, you're rubbing your liver with one hand, but you're also punching at the level of the liver. You're, you're striking someone else's liver. Or maybe it's also the energy of the liver is connected with wood, which is that sense of growing and stretching as you penetrate and hit it's all of the above yeah i mean i think that's the thing about five element practices right it's it's you're not you know you're not trying to be wood right you're trying to embody all of these different aspects of this element right so um the springiness the sort of the opening expansion contraction of wood is probably the most uh noticeable physical characteristic right uh, sort of springiness in terms of your mind. I get, like I said, it's the ability to get your mind to sort of penetrate into something, right? To go deeper into, into like, if you think about if you're, um, it's reading past the headline, right? Like, you know, metal is, is reading the headline. Wood is going, okay, I want to go deeper into it and actually understand the thing. So inside, in terms of these channels, it's like, you know, the, the physical movement is going to activate it. And then the, there's going to be a, um, uh, mental expression of that energy being sort of released. The next principle, which is pounding fist, pounding fist corresponds to fire and cultivate the heart. It is the opening and closing of unified chi, like the rending of a cannon blast. If it's chi is harmonized, then the heart will be empty and numinous and the body relaxed and calm. So there's the connection of heart with fire fist, pow chun. Right. So fire, you know, if wood is the slow expansion and contraction of something, fire is the rapid uh, sort of explosion, explosion and contraction of it, right? So like um, the energy you would use to like push yourself off of something really fast, right? Um, not necessarily the mechanics of it, but the, but the, the sort of mental energy that you would have to fire up to, to do that. Right. Um, so with, with the, like if you, if you take the movement of pouch, man, your hands actually come up, right. They come up your center line to the level of your heart. And then they separate at your, you know, at the heart, you know, gate essentially. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's activating that channel and it, it's, you know, moving, with your hand moving energy through that area now that's only the first level it can be much more than that but the the first sort of oh excuse me the first level of it is that as and that's why forms are uh you know doing forms correctly is as a thing because if it didn't matter you could put your hand anywhere you wanted right but it matters because if you have your hand in the right place you get these these you know, you activate these subtle channels, subtle energy channels inside your body and you, and you get that benefit. If you don't do that, you can still learn to fight with it. You just don't get that particular benefit from it. Right. Some people aren't interested and that's not part of what they do and no worries. Right. 
what do you want to put into it, you know? Next is crossing fist, earth fist. Crossing fist corresponds to earth and cultivates the spleen and harmonizes the stomach and is the gathering of a unified chi. If its form is round, its nature is full and its chi is flowing. Then the five elements are harmonious and the hundred things can develop. So here's that idea of earth fist, the final technique, um, working with the spleen and stomach. Um, its nature is round, it's flowing, and it, it from here a hundred things can develop. I get the sense that from, from crossing fist is a fist that can be used in so many different ways. It can create all a million different techniques like the 12, 12 animals. Once you get to the point of having all five elements, you can multiply them. You can combine them, but until you have all five of them, mm -hmm. you can't really do anything, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I think that there's that piece of it, and the 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 motion of it, right, is is that sort of lateral turning where you cross your body so that's activating all of those again those lateral meridians but these are the lateral meridians in the middle of your body where the stuff down below like the waist turning is is the lower lateral ones um and so you're getting all of this stuff about how uh the left and right sides cross and that opens things up inside your body um that don't necessarily get opened in just sort of normal activity. And I, one thing I can't help but notice is like each of these five fists takes place at the level of the organ it corresponds to. So this, this crossing fist is usually done low at, at spleen stomach level, whereas Pao Chun, the cannon fist is done up at the heart level. And each one of these, that's that, that second Nigong principle of where your hands go. So you're connecting to the energy of that area. You can use the same parallels with the Nagong sets, right? That um, each of the sets uh, emphasizes a movement that targets that area, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and um, for example, you know, when you do energy gates, it's the, the swings all sort of tap that, you know, the, you tap your lower back with the swings and kidneys, uh, kidneys and all that stuff. And then, and then in spiraling, your hands are up in the air by your chest and your heart. Uh, when you do heaven and earth, you're doing a lot of pumping and circles with your arms near your liver. Um, so yes, there is a definite correlation between if your hand is, is moving in that area, it's going to activate that thing. And that it, elemental it, property. Yeah, I think that, you know, it's important, especially when you're learning multiple systems to, to, have at least a general sense of, okay, this system is based on this particular, you know, a way of looking at the world versus this particular way of it. So if you're doing Shingi and Bagua, for example, there's a lot of parallels in those two martial arts in, in terms of the physical movements and the training and stuff, but they're using completely different um, framework frameworks so you, you know you have to talk about them in in different ways like the fire that you use in uh in bagua is not the same fire that you use in xing uh, likewise the water is not the same water so it's you know there are going to be some character characteristics in common for sure, sure but but the way you're talking about it is very different one is you know one is talking about the elemental aspects of that thing one is talking about sort of the cosmic aspects, you know, or the, all the ways that that particular thing changes, right? So it's, it's a much more complex system, you know. And here we have an introduction to it here in Mr. Jin Yun Ting's book. So here's the last thing I wanted to end with from the book. He describes the, the action or the weapon that goes along with each of these. So he says, first, Ooh, splitting nice. fist is like an axe. And this corresponds to metal. So Petra and splitting fist is like chopping with an axe and splitting a piece of wood. Does that sound about right? That sounds about right, yes. Well, here he's, in the second one's interesting. The form of drilling fist is like electricity and so corresponds to water. I haven't heard of that. Does he mean lightning with that, perhaps? Uh, I, would, I would think so, yes. So they're using the term electricity here, but I've heard it called lightning and thunder and, and drilling fist. There's a method of, of Zhuang Chun where you zigzag your punch. Right, that's what I was thinking of, yeah. And, then, and that's kind of the one that emphasizes that sort of 
um, more zappy kind of electrical thing. So the third one, the form of smashing fist is like an arrow, and so corresponds to wood. That's that shooting straight out of Bung Chun. Yes. The form of pounding fist is like a cannon, and so corresponds to fire. Again, the cannonball explosion is the Pao Chen symbol. Right. And so what do you think of the fifth one here? The form of crossing fist is like a spring, and so corresponds to earth. Like a spring? Yeah. Coiling, uh, kind of. Twisting, maybe. Yeah, yeah. If you're thinking even in terms of a, a, a coil, I would say absolutely. If you're thinking in terms of the action of springing, ah, that sounds a little bit more like wood no, to me. No, he's talking about a physical... A yeah, spring, yeah, yeah. The, the shape of a spring, yeah, yeah. Like a... I think, you know, it's funny because now nowadays, you know, or at least when I was learning it first, everybody used the analogy of the double helix because that was the new thing, in, you know, in mm-hmm. science that was, you know, and, and I think right. there's some of that with, you know, you, you just use the examples of the technology of your day, you know. Right. And maybe at the turn of the century, springs would have been around, but probably are just now coming into more common use. Yeah. Well, and it's something that everybody's familiar with, I think, is also, yeah. Right. Cannon, springs, right. arrows during the, yeah. yeah, this is during the Warlord period. We've been looking at the various principles of Nei Gung, and here we've been working on number two, the moving of chi through the, all the different channels in the body and how, last time we talked a lot about how this is a natural flow that you want to participate in in Nei Gung and, and get to know and help it, help it flow. Um... And so, you know, again, and it pairs with Negung practice number three, which is to have more, to move it more consciously. But at this first stage, you're just trying to adapt to it and become aware of it and see what you feel inside your own body and get to know it. Um, and so I, I was going to ask Isaac, you know, looking at the system of Qigong that we've been talking about, each one of those talks about this second Negung principle in a different way and taps into it in a different way. So looking first at the dragon and tiger practices, that a big part of that seems to be moving chi along these natural flows and letting your hands sort of trace how chi is moving in your body. That that seems to be the primary focus of that set. Yeah, it's it's pairing that with your breath, right? So there's a there's a push pull with your energy, right? So you're moving along these lines, you're pulling it and pushing it along these lines, and that's paired with your breath, right? So you breathe in, for example, on the way up or breathe out on the way down, something like that. And it's different for each move, so I don't want to get into the specifics about each movement. But as a general thing for the, the, the set, which is, you know, there are other Qigong sets that do this as well. But this is just the one that, you know, I'm familiar with. But the basic idea is that you're trying to harmonize these two things, right? Right well, three things, your physical movement, uh, the awareness of that physical movement, moving energy inside your body and your breath. And it's sort of the beginning phase of, of all Nei Gung is at least get that, you know, before you start trying to integrate more complicated movements, like turning your waist and, you know, uh, opening and closing your joints and doing all this, you know, sort of more involved stuff. This is just getting the basic thing of okay you can breathe you can do a simple movement with your arms and you can get some sense of how that physical movement is creating energetic movement inside your body and usually it's as it's you know um it starts with just the awareness of like heat or uh like a sense of magnetic connection right like that you sort of feel a pulling or pushing from your other hand or your arm or your body. Um, most people it's heat because there is a certain amount of warmth that comes off the, you know, the body when it's alive. So that that's the easiest thing to feel, but it's also sort of a tingly feeling. Uh, you know, for me, it was a like when I first felt it, it was kind of like a, a an expansive feeling, right? That, Not that in the sense of getting bigger, but just that as this thing would pass by, it was like there was a a sense of uh, just expansion. I don't know how to to describe it. You know, expansion of awareness, and maybe is a better way to put it. That that I could just feel more as it was going past it. 
Um, well, what about in opening the energy gates? Where, how, how do we find that second principle manifesting itself in there? Again, it's going to get less, you know, it's going to be less uh, of the main thing. But, you know, when you move your arms up and down, the first, you know, stage of it is as your arms move up and down and it passes those channels, it's, you know, it's moving energy through a particular channel. Um, you know, it's, it depends on the version of cloud hands you're doing too, but... Um, if you're just doing the simple version where your hands just go straight up and down, uh, essentially, yeah, you're, you know, you're moving energy up and down the left and right channel. To me, it seems the strongest when you begin the process dissolving and the first step is to scan the body without affecting the energy or whatever. And as you scan, you're, you're activating this principle of joining in with the movement as it's already taking place as it comes, you know, all the way down through your body, just connecting to that downward movement. That isn't through a specific channel necessarily. So, you know, I, 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 again, like I said, I think it's with energy gates, it's a little bit less uh, of a direct connection. For example, when you get into heaven and earth, there is a whole chunk of it where you're essentially doing that meridian type of stuff with your hands. So, uh, you know, as your, as your hand comes down and past your head and everything, um, and when your palms are facing your body. Uh, so at that point, you're joining in with the flows. Because, you know, again, like I said, I, I just think there's, the, from the way it breaks down in this, doing things with your mind and your sense of feeling is different than doing things with your body, right? So, And this um, one's this is with the body and the hands. To me, this is more about doing it with your body or with your hands. Um, so maybe in that sense, when the three jowls of the swings, your hands are rising, maybe that's more of what you're talking about. To me, it would be more of the swings. For example, when you're doing the first swing, you're activating all of the lateral meridians on the, the lower burner. Then when you do the second swing, you're activating the middle one and third swing activates the upper one. Um, and so there's a lot of these like, you know, indirect can, you know, uh, 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 you know, things being affected on an indirect level where in dragon and tiger, you're, you're targeting them directly. Well, what about in the case of spiraling, since that pairs with opening the energy gates, when you do spiraling, I guess it's the same idea in some ways. It, that's the same thing, but done purely with your intent. So there is no, you know, there is no physical movement in spiraling, right? You're not moving. You're, you're holding a static posture and okay. your your mind is the thing that has to move the energy through your body, sure. and I, you know, and I think that's well, maybe sort one of... connection would be the sense of where you you know you get your hands in an odd posture that's paired with some energy spot. So in that sense, the hands connection is yeah is for be sure engaged a little right. Bit I right. mean, it, it, the the physical postures generally kind of awaken a certain area right. in your body. Um, I think of the hands at the lower dantian. You know, those, those but, palms are aimed right at that spot. Right. I mean, but I think those are almost more your whole constitution rather than one specific channel. True. Fair so it, it's a little more that would bring us to bend the bow then I and mean, the bend the bow the hands and the palms really connect to your to your energy fields in all kinds of different ways i mean yeah this is bringing it into the spine right so this is now moving energy through your spine and getting it to you know subtle movements with your hands are going to change how the thing moves in your in your uh through your spinal cord and stuff like that I think of how you move your hands at a different level to affect a different area of your spine at the beginning of bend the bow. You can do it as that where you're just, as you move your hands up and down, you're going to activate those meridians. But again, that isn't the prime mover, right? The, the difference in a set is, it's not so much that you don't do certain things. It's, it's that which one is it, are you using as the... The, the the generator for the whole thing right so as you get further down the line it gets more difficult right to you know right to, so but, gods for instance is the last set that one's going to be stacked with more stuff at the end of the line may gone but it's still going to include number two in it right number two will be in there it just won't be the main focus well and, and gods is a little bit in the sense a little bit different in the sense that it does contain all the other components mm. um so 
there are moments in it when you are doing that thing. Uh, for example, yeah, exactly what you just did. That, that when you're in movement three, for example, when your hands are moving up and down. Mm. Um, but again, I mean, I don't want to get too into specifics. We'll save that for the <laughs> save that for the Patreon. But the general sense is just: can you connect your hand movement, your body movement? Because it isn't just your hands; it's your legs and everything else too. Um, but your body movement to moving energy along. Again, along specific channels. That's sort of the the thing that di- differentiates it from things like the later stuff, where you're maybe moving energy through the whole the whole body. You know, a channel being part of it, but um, you know, you sort of flood the whole thing rather than just moving along the the surface of it. So it's it's the again again it's, it, this is all. It, it I think it's important to think about it in terms of its. Um, it's a hierarchy, right? You're building one thing on top of another, on top of another. So this is, you know, if you think about it from the point of view of someone who's completely never done any of this stuff, right? Breathing is something that's real accessible, right? So if you, you know, if you, if you're listening to this and you teach people, right? Anybody, everybody knows what you're talking about when you talk about breathing, because we all do it, right? Now you start talking about cheap, uh, you, you're about half the population is going to be like, what's this person talking about? So to give people an easy way of de- sort of entering into the world of chi, these type of movements where you're just moving your body to activate a flow on the surface, it's a lot more, more mentally accessible, but also just easier to do than to try to do something with your physical or with with you without your physical you know just with your intent or something like that whereas breathing and moving these channels physically are both very physical things to do as opposed to some of the more further down nigong which are strictly internal exactly so you're working your way into it kind of which is a way this which the way these principles are set up is really cool because you you start with the most gross actions and then you get more and more familiar with your you know how your yeah. body's the, working the, in your mind in there you know the order of the list is very important, right? It's mm-hmm. it's not the, it's not a random order. It's not like I mean, of course, everybody learns it sort of a little bit out However of order, can, but, yeah. but ideally, right? It's that these these principles like they they snowball, they stack they stack on top of each other. So you're never gonna leave a principle entirely out of what you're doing, um, but it may not be the the focus, right? So it's it's you know i like i always kind of go to the ice cream analogy right that um breathing and moving chi with your body are the sugar and cream of qigong right Mm. all ice cream has sugar and cream in it if Mm it doesn't have that it's not (laughs) fucking ice cream (laughs) it can be a it can still be a frozen dessert but it ain't ice cream right so so you know all neigong essentially can can contains breathing and moving chi with your body i mean that's that's kind of the definition right Um, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes after that you know and so it's it's like you just kind of looking at it in terms of of a progression that's going to build on each piece you know not that each piece is sort of done and then forgotten about or um is always the foot main focus You keep them with you as you go, just like everything in this type of stuff, where whenever your teacher gives you a new instruction, they usually mean keep doing the other stuff too, just add this to it. And there you go. It's fine to do that, right? If you want to take Dragon and Tiger or whatever the set is you do and make that the basis for your entire uh, practice, right? So the basis for your Tai Chi, your Shingi, your Bagua, whatever, that's, that's perfectly fine. This particular breakdown has components that are, uh, you know, layer cake, right? So you got to layer them on at the right time. Cake, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. All right, brother. All right, man. Nice talking to you. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Okay, so this is the Qigong practice session for the moving energy along meridians. Uh, So. 
to begin with, just take your hands and put your palms together so you feel some warmth because you can rub them together, get them warm, until, and then get some warmth between your palms, some heat, and you can feel the sense of one against the other. And you can pull it apart and push it closer together just to sort of enhance the sensation, right? And there's going to be a certain distance where you'll have the strongest connection of these two things. And that's going to be sort of the distance you're going to want to target your, your body with, right? So it's usually about uh, a fist or two distance away from the surface that you're trying to feel. So take your hand and move so if your if your left hand is still right you got your two palms facing each other take your right hand and just move it up to your wrist and see if you can feel a continuous line from the center of your palm up to your wrist and then keep that same you know distance and again if you want to move your hand a little bit just to kind of intensify the sensation you can do that and then you're going to move it up your arm up your forearm all the way to your elbow and if you lose the connection if you lose it go back to your to the the center of your palm and start over again and go all the way through you know, the, the important thing is that when you move along these lines that you aren't skipping anything. You aren't jumping over anything. So now your hand's at your elbow. The palms is facing your elbow joint. Now move your hand down. And if you could turn your arm over and move your hand down the outside of your arm, just to get a different sensation, you can feel. So you went up the inside of it. And now you can move down the outside of it. And that will take you to moving it down. And if you go all the way to your wrist, you can sort of feel it at your wrist. You can pull it a little bit and push it a little bit to intensify the feeling. And then take it down to the center of your palm. So it's on the back of your palm now, but it still feels that same point through your palm and you can go all the way out to your fingertips past your fingertips and then turn your hand over again and bring it back to your palm so you push it out past your fingertips you pull it back into your palm and then you would just continue and you can go up again to your wrist to your elbow could continue all the way up to your shoulder if you want and then turn your arm over and go down the outside of your arm from your shoulder and again it's important not to skip so don't go too fast it's also important not to space out so don't go too slow you got to find a speed where you can maintain this awareness and this connection but also maintain what you're doing and not space out and you know, let your mind wander too much to your laundry list. All right, and then just to finish, sort of rub your hands together and get that warmth in your palms again. You can kind of just let it kind of just fade away between your hands. And you can do that same thing on your leg or your body, right? And, and just try it on different parts of your body to feel you know, that, how it connects. All right. Thanks for listening. Hey folks, Isaac here. Uh, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Just a quick reminder, check out our Instagram for some images uh, to go along with the episodes. And very shortly, I'll be putting up a doc on the website so you can see the names and dates of the individuals we're talking about on the podcast. Okay, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, give us a like and a subscribe. Tell a friend and take care of yourself.